What Paul Ryan's departure really means, that's the focus of tonight's angle. People seem so surprised by Speaker Ryan's announcement today, but I think it all makes perfect sense. After all, John Boehner is gone, Eric Cantor is gone, and now Paul Ryan is out. It should be said up front, I've known Paul Ryan for a long time, he is a stand-up person. He is a man of deep faith. He is a man committed to his family, which he said was the reason for his retirement. Now all three of our kids are teenagers. What I realize is if I am here for one more term, my kids will only have ever known me as a weekend dad. Uh, I just can't let that happen. Well, on a personal level, this makes perfect sense. Remember, Ryan accepted the speakership with a lot of reluctance. But on a political level, this reveals the schism between the establishment wing of the party and the conservative, populist Trump wing. Let's not forget how tortured and outright critical at times Ryan was of Trump before and after his nomination. This is not conservatism. What was proposed yesterday is not what this party stands for, and more importantly, it's not what this country stands for. You have said throughout this process that you will support the Republican presidential nominee. Now you have a presumptive nominee, Donald Trump. Will you support him? Well, uh, to be perfectly candid with you, Jake, I I'm just not ready to do that at this point. I'm not there right now. I regret those comments that he made. I don't think claiming a person can't do the job because of their race is sort of like the textbook definition of a racist comment. But after all of that, Ryan and the president did a, well, they were able to forge a personal and a working relationship. But we talk quite often. Can you Probably pick up the phone day. and call him any time? I anytime? Call him anytime. Yeah, we talk all the time. And we talk should... about everything. We talk about uh, policy. We talk about families. We talk about our kids. We talk about everything. And the uh, speaker and the president worked together on the tax cut bill, which will no doubt be the highlight of their collaboration. And Paul Ryan was great on the life issue, and he empowered important House investigations. But on many other fronts, Ryan leaves the House with much unfinished business. Although the House did pass their own Obamacare repeal bill, both Ryan and McConnell together were unable to take it over the finish line. Senate passed nothing. And his long-sought desire to reform entitlements, that big share of the uh, federal budget, never went anywhere. The true tragedy is that Ryan's swan song will be that nightmarish $1.3 trillion omnibus spending bill. It's expected to explode the deficit to over $1 trillion by 2020. So for someone who had dedicated a lot of his political life to fiscal responsibility, that is a tough legacy. Let's face it, Speaker Ryan was also uncomfortable with President Trump's positions on everything from tariffs to the wall to foreign policy. The two of them represent opposing strains of conservatism in some sense. One, the free trade, more interventionist establishment, that's Paul Ryan, and the other, a more American first populism, that's Trump. The Speaker's departure is a clear sign in my mind that Trump's vision, not Ryan's, is the future of the party. People misread the investigation mania that was swirling around the White House as a sign that the president's agenda is unfocused, unsteady, maybe even unpopular. But in reality, these investigations were the insurance policy against the tide of conservative populism that Trump represented. They needed to stop Trump. Because why? His vision is actually pretty popular, and it's actually working. Manufacturing's up and unemployment's down. China's back on its heels and making trade concessions. Never thought I'd see it. Rocket man's ready to flush his nukes. Unbelievable. Regulations are being slashed. Great for business. Even on issues where Paul Ryan used to, you know, he used to own these issues. Trump is now, in his own way, making a difference. Just yesterday, the president signed an executive order pushing work requirements. Hallelujah for those on public assistance. Ryan's exit, like Flake and Corker's before him, is but another indication that the establishment that was unable to beat Trump in 2016 is frankly just out of steam. We all know the phrase, if you can't beat him, join him. In this case, it seems to be, 
If you can't beat them, leave them. And the establishment may finally be ceding the party to the man who took it from them in the first place. And that's the angle.